I've been following the Karen Reed trial, and this week something bothered me about Trooper Paul's testimony. And I'm not talking about his ragdoll physics explanation for Officer John O'Keefe's injuries. Part of his testimony is regarding the event data he recovered from Karen Reed's SUV. In his opinion, that data provides evidence that Karen Reed hit John O'Keefe with her SUV while traveling in reverse at 24 miles per hour. I think there are some problems with this conclusion. In particular, the key cycles don't seem to add up. But before I go any further, I'll let Trooper Paul explain what a key cycle is. So a key cycle is essentially from when the vehicle's off, it's pressed on, it doesn't necessarily need to be running or turned on, it just needs to be turned on and then off again, and that'd be one key cycle. All right, thank you, Trooper Paul. Uh, so this next image is shown to the jury during Trooper Paul's testimony. The red arrows on the right were used to indicate which events occurred during his tests, and the sections highlighted in yellow are the events he claims to show Karen Reed hit John O'Keefe. An important note is that the time and date column is blank, so there's no way to know what time the events were recorded from this report. Now I'd like to bring your attention to the column labeled key cycle. Notice how the numbers jump from 1,082 to 1,111, and then again to 1,162. This shows the SUV is tracking key cycles even while trigger events are not being recorded. Trooper Paul testified that his test began at key cycle 1,164, and that Karen hit John during key cycle 1,162, indicated by the yellow highlight. That means there should only be one key cycle between the time Karen allegedly hit John and the time Trooper Paul ran his tests. So let's work backwards from the key cycle 1164 to see when cycle 1162 would have occurred. To do this, I will be using evidence provided in court during Trooper Buchanan's testimony on day 20. The main driveway security footage shows the SUV on the tow truck flatbed as it arrives at Canton PD. As we can see in the footage, the SUV does not appear to be running while it is towed. The Canton PD Sallyport footage then shows the SUV being driven into the Sallyport. This means that key cycle 1163 would have began when the SUV arrived at Canton PD and ended when it was parked in the Sallyport. Footage from Karen Reed's parents' home in Dighton shows that when the SUV was towed, it was driven onto the flatbed. The same camera shows Karen Reed and her father arriving and parking the SUV earlier that day. This means that cycle 1162 would have occurred when the tow truck driver started the car and drove it onto the flatbed and then turned it off. Based on this information, the events recorded during key cycle 1162 do not show what Trooper Paul claims it does. So if the event wasn't caused by Karen Reed hitting John O'Keefe in the early hours of January 29, 2002, what caused it? If we look at the VCH data chart for the second event recorded during the key cycle 1162 provided by Trooper Paul, we might be able to find some answers. I will try and provide a brief summary of important parts of the chart based on Trooper Paul's testimony. The top row of the chart under the red bar shows the time in seconds since the vehicle was started and only shows 10 seconds of data recorded for this event. The orange boxes in the row labeled shift position signal with a 1 indicate that the vehicle is moving forward for 3 seconds. The next box in the row is labeled 0 and indicates that the vehicle wasn't moving for 0.5 seconds. Then the vehicle was in reverse for the remaining 6.5 seconds recorded by the event. The dark blue boxes indicate how hard the gas pedal was being pressed. In the last three seconds of the event, the gas pedal was pressed about 75% of the way down. This is what triggers the event to be recorded by the system. The light blue boxes represent the speed of the vehicle. The chart indicates the SUV was traveling over 20 miles per hour in reverse during the last three seconds of the recording. So here's the question that wasn't asked or answered during Trooper Paul's testimony. How does the SUV measure speed? The car doesn't measure how far it traveled. It tracks how fast the wheels are spinning and uses that to interpret speed. If the SUV was stuck and the tires weren't able to get traction, they could spin pretty fast without actually moving the SUV. The SUV would have still recorded a speed based on how fast the tires spun. So, it is possible that the data could be explained if the SUV was stuck in the snow and the driver pressed the gas pedal hard to get unstuck. But, is there any evidence of that? Well, let's take another look at the video of Karen Reed's SUV being loaded onto the flatbed, and we'll see. 
Did you catch that? Watch the back tire when it's put in reverse. Do you see the snow being flung by the tire as it tries to get traction? It seems like we have a pretty good explanation for the event data, but there's one thing I haven't been able to figure out. Where did the 36 miles come from between the SUV being loaded onto the tow truck at Dighton and it being parked in the Canton PD Sally Port? I wonder if it can explain the SUV shaped snow ring in the Sally Port as well. Thanks for watching.